Let's talk about AI. I think that everyone is always looking for like things that are so easy that you're like, oh, it's here. That was that was this morning. Not gonna lie, the multi-select, I was like, yes. Figma slides was amazing. Use Google Slides, which is fine. Yeah. But if we're already in Figma, why not use? Actions can do all sorts of things. They can you can type in it uh, all sorts of commands from within Figma. For example, let's type in a pizza finder app with a map and a card for a selected restaurant. And I'm gonna say make it. You can see it's got Tony's Pizza, which should actually figure out how to do the letters for. Maybe not the all the letters. I can change the theme. So I'm gonna go back to make designs. And this time I'll say a personal portfolio. So let's do an architect. Uh, let's see website. We'll call it a Middle Earth architect. All right, make it. It comes up with Eco Architect. You know, it's Elrond, of course, and it's gonna pull in some images as well. <laughs> uh, he seems very serious. Nice Hobbiton Eco Village there. So I'm gonna go to the prompt portion, and I'm gonna write in add a contact form. Okay, it actually worked. Next up, my Slack has a lot of things that look like this. Uh, this is an example channel from Uber. So for example, uh, here's a screenshot of uh, the app. And they're saying, hey, does anyone know where the Figma file for this design is? Does anyone else have a channel like this? I'm going to paste this right in. How do you find what you're looking for? I'm going to now use uh, this search for similar command to see what it does. It finds for me within Figma the right screen for that app. And it's all in vector form. So I can, I can navigate this, I can change things. I need to get the screen that's after this next, and I just totally don't remember what it's called. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to search here for a string that I remember on that screen, which is confirm your pickup spot. And I immediately get screens that are relevant. So now I'll just drag that in as well. I cannot wait to get my hands on it and try it out. I mean, especially having like fear of the blank canvas in the beginning, oh because I'm gosh. also talking to a lot of junior designers, right? Yeah. And when they start out, they own portfolios and want to do their own case studies, exactly. right? So like, like, how do I start? Where do I start? <laughs> yeah. So from that perspective, I really like this kind of, okay, let's get over the fear of a blank canvas and just start. Also the finding, the screenshot of the Figma file and being able to find that. I needed that yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So it was really nice to see that actually come to life. You know, in our world too, we have so many Figma files that we sift through all the time across multiple projects. So it's nice when like those things pop up again. Next, what I want to do to build this out is I know there's like this icon somewhere, sort of like a, a circle. So I'm just going to draw this with a pencil tool. So I'm going to draw a circle and it's not my best work, but all right, I'm going to group this, say search for similar. And now if I go to components, you'll see right there. What we hope is that this will uh, make it much easier to find what you need in Figma. Next up, how do we help you stay in the flow using AI? So this is a recipe app that I want to build out. Uh, you can see there's some ingredients, but I'd like to make them longer. I'd like to put a picture in, things like that. I'm going to first uh, just select this component. One thing that I typically do is I might duplicate uh, this component a few times. You'll see now I get this helpful suggestion to replace content. If I press it, it'll just replace that with the right ingredients that I might want. If I go to the parent frame, I can just click and drag. And now it's super easy to insert all sorts of great content into your application. So we're going to put in lemon bars. I'm going to say make an image. And I'm just going to type in lemon bars. It's always very, I'm always very nervous waiting for the. OK, so let's see which one looks the most appetizing. Another thing we can do is we can remove the background. And I want to see what this looks like if I remove the background of that image. So I'll press remove background. It should remove. One thing that we often do as designers is we, after creating an app, in English. We want to see how it's going to look in other languages. I want to see if my design works uh, in German first because these are very long strings. Let's see what happens. There is a slight issue that I found, which is that in German, uh, you can see there's truncation here. And so what I'm going to do is in this main component, I'm going to make it just a little bit wider. Let me go back to English. So I, I'm just going to say, um, name layers as well and see what happens. Uh, and what should happen is that it's going to go through all of these different layers and instantly rename them. I'm not going to lie, that's one of my favorite features I'm showing today. That is incredible. Oh my God. That is such a smart thing to be able to do. Yeah, auto layout suggests for me. Yeah, uh, that's uh, the small features that have like a big impact in your day to day life are always a I great totally thing. Agree. Like, I mean, every, it's easy to say, oh, AI, AI, uh, because of course it's a lot of magic and it's yeah. great. But even <laughs> if even anyone comes into a file, I can come fix it. Oh, if oh anyone gosh. ever complains, I can no name that layer. Exactly. So it's just great. Exactly. No. So, we finish up the screen, 
I'm going to pull it over here, and now we've got this entire flow. So what would I do next? Next up, I want to prototype this. Uh, I need to add some noodles in and figure out different sources and targets uh, for my prototype. But what if AI could help here as well? So we're going to type or go to make prototype and see what happens. You can see that it's starting to draw the connections between my screens. And it even gets uh, the search as well. Let's see what the preview is going to be like. If I click, I can see that it's, uh, it's working. I can go to my, it says lemon cookies there, but that's OK. And I can uh, even go back and just really easily navigate my application here, even scroll. If I go to the responsive uh, tab in the viewer, I can show off that responsive viewer one more time. It's, it's kind of fun. All the AI features you just saw are now in beta. That beta will be rolling out with the UI3 beta. From the keynote, I think the hardest part for me is, you know, just like where to start. So I think, you know, being able to prompt and getting a detailed response or like at least an initial baseline, I think that's really cool. Um, but also just the ease of use stuff, like naming your layers and like being able to ideate, I think that's really cool and it makes your life much easier. Today, I'd like to announce and introduce you all to Figma Slides. Across the years, We've seen many of you use Figma in unexpected ways. I use Figma to create like all my presentations, um, but I think that like actually having a Figma slide like as a product would make it a lot better and easier. I agree. <laughs> now, all too often, your slides inside of Figma look a little something like this. Okay, so here we have a pre-launch review for a new product, Earthling. In Figma Slides, we sweat the details so that you wouldn't have to. So for example, if I wanted to go ahead and change this slide from white to black, you'll notice that the text color updates automatically as well. Not only does this work with black and white, but with any color in our color wheel. This way, you can focus on the big picture. Over here, we have grid mode. We've seen all of you leverage the power of the infinite canvas inside of Figma, and we wanted to give you a bird's eye view into your entire presentation. So if I want to go ahead and move this research section up, I can do so easily. And if I want to go ahead and reorder my slides, you'll see that everything reflows. We also give you the ability to ensure that your entire deck has a consistent look and feel by giving you a template picker where you have the ability to use different styles in order to ensure your fonts and colors are all in order. I'm not gonna lie, the multi-select, I was like, I was like, yes, amen <laughs> to that. We needed that for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I can also use this view to animate my slides. So I can go over into my animate tab and change the transition from none to my favorite smart animate. Now, if I go into my presenter view, which has my speaker notes right here, I'll be able to test out my transitions. Figma Slides was amazing. As a designer, I've personally experienced the, you know, the roadblocks as to you know, not being able to have speaker notes or not being able to kind of create a cohesive presentation based on my designs. And I think uh, Figma Slides you know, attest to a lot of that. So Now let's zoom into slide 16 for some focused editing. I see here that this slide needs a little bit of tweaking. First of all, the text, there's just way too much of it. We also have this custom text tone dial. If I want to go more concise and a little more professional, I can just drag the dial and see my text automatically update. You can use this exact same tone dial to take an outline and flesh out your entire presentation. Now I see all of my Figma design favorites are right here. Auto layout, vector editing, bam. Let's say I wanted to bring in an interactive design into my deck. A lot of the time, the way that you're going to do this is via a screen recording. But anytime you edit your designs, you waste time recording and re-recording, and most designers give up and just use static mocks. Well, with Figma Slides, we give you the ability to copy a prototyping link, paste it into your deck, and have it load automatically. This way, when I hit present, I have the ability to engage directly with the presentation. So I can go ahead, hit the search bar, scroll over to the map, and move around. And even cooler, if I go ahead and spotlight Raji, I can see him interact with the prototype. Look, Ma, no hands. For us, for our presentations, we would either have to exit the presentation to go into the live one so that we could demo it right there, or we'd have to screen record it. And just like they were saying in the presentation, re-record it and re-record it every time you made a small change. So this will be way, way nicer. We use Google Slides, which is fine. Yeah. But if we're already in Figma, why not use? So 
This is what Figma looked like eight years ago. So simple and so pristine. Since then, we've added a lot. We've launched a lot of new capabilities. Some people have suggested that we might want to kill some features. And yes, eventually, we're going to turn off the old UI. Now, some other things to note uh, are that I can also resize this panel. And so today, what we're doing is making it so it's a bit easier to get into uh, auto layout by making something called suggest auto layout. If I press this, you'll see that I get all the frames that I need. And on the right-hand side here, we've got a stack of cards that are all inheriting from this component. If I drag this in, then what you'll see is as I resize here, it'll automatically snap to fill. Now, today, as part of our usability efforts, we've also thought ahead about how to make it easier to get started in Figma. And uh, we've been working with our friends at Apple and Google to bring you the latest iOS 18 and Material 3 kits right inside of Figma. So you can see here, uh, we've given our Assets panel a bit of an overhaul, too. You can see that it's really nicely sorted. Uh, I can also search within the kit for what I want. Now, let's say I go to Buttons, I can find what I need, and I can just plop it right in. So if I click here and switch to Dark Mode, you'll see that all that automatically works. For Material 3, I can switch uh, from Auto Light Theme to Dark High Contrast. We can also do this for uh, going from Responsive Mobile to Tablet. I can click on this tab bar here, and you'll see I automatically, through Code Connect, get the Swift UI code I need. So we just talked a lot about how we're evolving Figma for our core users. Now I want to dive into how we're making Figma a better experience for developers. To date, teams have marked over 4 million designs as ready for dev. Today, we're introducing some huge updates to dev mode to support the realities of an iterative design process. OK, so as a designer, this file probably looks pretty common. This can be a bit messy, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. We know that good design takes a lot of iteration. Today, when I make these kinds of changes, it's not immediately obvious when I'm finished making my edits. But now, this frame has a new yellow indicator. It's in a new edited state, as you can see. Launching today, I can now click on this and remark it as ready for dev, leaving a note describing the changes. In this case, I added some spacing. There, I'm done with my changes. So today, we're launching the new Ready for Dev view, which I can find here at the top left of any file with Ready for Dev content in it. With this new view, I can see all the different work in progress and everything that's ready for dev in the file. So let's click into this to get some more details. This brings us to Focus View, which we're also introducing today. Focus View cuts out all the canvas clutter and just shows me the design that I actually want to inspect and nothing else. Once it loads here, I'm going to resize and, well, this is not exactly what I want, right? It's just scaling the design up and down. But launching today, we have a new responsive setting for the prototype viewer. But now I want to show you how you can make use of Code Connect for your design systems. So let's jump into VS Code quickly. Code Connect uses files that live in your code base to create a link between your code and your Figma component. So that was a lot of new functionality for dev mode. Code Connect is out of beta today with new improvements like surfacing the connected code in the component playground, a faster setup process, and support for React, React Native, iOS, and Android. We're also launching the Ready for Dev view, Focus view, and new statuses for edited and completed. Code Connect for UI kits will be available on Pro and above, and all other features will be available on organization and enterprise plan. And everything is available starting today. To build more unique products in a future with AI, your craft will be the differentiator. For us at Figma, craft is both seen and also felt. And we know we need to continuously raise our bar to meet yours. I want to thank you all for being here with me today, and I cannot wait to meet many of you today and tomorrow. Now please go and enjoy Config! Hi all. I think spatial computing is the future um, of AI and like, how we can mend you know, human emotions with AI. I think we will need more thinkers, so problem solvers, because a part of our job, which is like creating the visual direction will be taught and, and used and made by AI in one way or another. So it's way more about trying to figure out what is the problem, where do we want to go next, and how do we solve that for our customers.
abuses whoever whoever is the target group. So I think this will become more and more important. Yeah, it's more it's more in in, in your head and in the theory, and then translating it uh, into a way that the AI can support us with. So I think that's a big change in the future. Honestly, just using the different AI tools that exist. So whether it's experimenting with ChatGPT or OpenAI or using you know image generation software, seeing what they can do, what they can't do. Honestly, going through Reddit and seeing what people are talking about, and they're like, wow, look at this cool integration of AI into this new thing. And honestly, the best way to learn about it is to use them and see their limitations and also their insane capabilities.